If you've been following my videos for a while, you probably know by now that 90% of civs follow one of two different build orders for the early game. Magnus Internals with Pen, Brush, and Voice, or a Moksha Holy Site Opener with Monumentality. However, beyond the first Governor choice, I haven't covered in much depth how to best spend Governor titles. That changes in today's guide for Civ 6 multiplayer with a better balanced game mod. First off, a disclaimer. The footage for this video is taken from games played on the beta 5.8 version of Better Balance Game, which isn't finalized as of the release date of this video. This beta version of the mod contains a few changes to some of the relevant governors. At this point, it seems fairly likely that these changes will be pushed to the live version very soon, so we'll be working with them in mind. First off, to understand why we'll be spending our governor titles the way we do, we have to understand what makes for a good opening build order in Civ 6. No matter what, we'll want three things. Production, food, and culture. The high priority of production is obvious. It's needed to make everything, from settlers to monuments to districts. So, when it comes to food, the most obvious reason we prioritize it is that growing our cities lets us work more tiles and increase our production, but there's more to it than that. We want to get all of our early cities to four population quickly, as this is when a city unlocks the ability to construct a second district. In Civ 6, the cost of constructing a district scales with the number of technologies and civics completed at the moment it's placed down. As a consequence, it's best to grow our cities quickly so that we can get as many districts placed down in the early game as possible, before they become more expensive. The last piece of the early game puzzle is culture. Culture is valued more highly than science early on because, outside of war, the classical and medieval era civics are simply much more useful than the classical and medieval era technologies. Most importantly, the Civics Tree grants access to more Governor titles and the Serfdom Policy card for two extra build charges on all new builders. At first glance, it seems like this card merely makes producing builders 66% more efficient. However, because of the fact that builders become more expensive the more of them you make, the math works out such that Serfdom actually increases the number of tile improvements you get per point of production spent on builders by more than 100% in the long run. Thus, every early game build order must have some way of generating culture in order to be competitive. Now that we know what's necessary in order for an early game build order to succeed, we are ready to start tackling the question of where to spend our governor titles. We should always be ready to tailor our governor title spending decisions to compensate for whichever of these three yields we're lacking in a given game. The first game we'll be looking at is one played as Cree, whose extra trade route capacity and extra trade route yields obviously pushes them towards a standard commercial hub opening with the governor Magnus' promotions for extra internal trade route yields. One key thing to note is that Cree already gets a ton of extra food on internal trade routes. Consequently, our cities can reach 4 population quite easily, even without having to spend a governor title on Magnus' food promotion. This means that we'll always start the game by spending just 2 governor titles on Magnus, one to assign him and one to grab the extra production on internal trade routes. We can skip the food promotion. Typically, the governor title budget for the early game is going to be 5 titles, one at Early Empire, one at State Workforce, one from constructing the Government Plaza, one from constructing the first building in the Government Plaza, and one from Defensive Tactics, since we pick this Civic up along the way when we rush for Feudalism to unlock the Serfdom card. In this game, we got very lucky and were awarded an extra governor title from a tribal village, but we'll just ignore that for the sake of this guide. In general, our early game build orders need to be planned around a 5 governor title budget. With that in mind, there are a few variations of governor title spending to be aware of when playing with Magnus internals. If we spawn with very little food around, such as the full plane spawn from my Sweden Civ Spotlight video, we can't afford to skip Magnus' food promotion. As a result, we'll spend 3 titles on them, being left with just 2 titles afterwards. In this case, the best way to use them is often to go for Moksha and grab his left side promotion for extra culture. More culture is never a bad thing. In games where we miss our first golden age and therefore don't have access to pen, brush, and voice, we need to compensate for our lack of culture by going for Moksha earlier. Therefore, instead of going Magnus 3 followed by Moksha 2, we instead go Magnus 2, then Moksha 2, then return to spend our fifth title on Magnus. 
Returning to the Cree game, we're fortunate enough here to not need Magnus' food promotion, so given our budget of five early game governor titles, we have three left to spend. Therefore, we're able to go for the city park strategy. This strategy revolves around spending three governor titles on the governor Liang in order to unlock her city parks promotion. Then, we move her around from city to city, building one park in each one. Ideally, we also want to get value out of her Inherent Effect, which grants an extra build charge to new builders trained in her city. This becomes easier once we understand how the game handles the things that go on during turn rollovers. It seems like research, production, and governors establishing all take place at the same time, but there's actually an order to these things. Fortunately for us, governors establish before production queues are resolved. This means that a builder that finishes being trained in Liang City on the same turn she finishes establishing will benefit from the extra build charge she grants. The thing that makes City Park so strong is not necessarily the extra yields they grant on their tile, although the culture and science are very welcome. A large part of its power is the one extra amenity and two extra housing the tile improvement grants to the city. Those extra amenities and housing are the secret behind the phenomenal scaling of this build. In this Cree game in particular, we're playing on the rarely played map type of Inland Sea. In this map, fresh water is far more scarce than normal. As a result, the extra two housing granted by a city park can be a godsend, salvaging waterless cities which would otherwise struggle with housing. The last thing to note about going for Liang is that she has anti-synergy with the audience chamber building that can be constructed in the government plaza. Audience chamber's effect requires that a governor be fully established in a city to take effect. However, the city parks build requires spending three whole governor titles on Liang, and then moving her around constantly so that she hardly spends any time established in a city. As a result, we only really want to consider running city parks when playing with a spawn that has enough room to justify going for the ancestral hall in our government plaza instead of for the audience chamber. If you want more insight into which spawns are the best for each building, I cover this in depth in my earlier guide, precisely how many settlers to produce in Civ 6. The last governor title variation I want to cover before we move on to discussing religious civs is the early Amani strategy. This involves spending our very first governor title on Amani, who can be assigned to a city-state to act as two envoys. This is only ever good when we can become suzerain of a top-tier city-state that provides one of the core early game bonuses we discussed earlier. Johannesburg, Ayutthaya, and Zanzibar are examples of these city-states. Johannesburg grants amazing production, Ayutthaya grants a ton of culture, and Zanzibar's extra amenities can increase all of our yields empire-wide. After spending our first title on Amani, we return to spending them on the usual suspects of Magnus, Moksha, etc. If you want to see this strategy used to great effect, check out my spotlight on CPL's Science Victory record. In the Better Balance game mod, Amani also grants plus two food and production on all trade routes sent to a city-state she's assigned to. This pushes the suzerain bonus of Kumasi over the line granting a ton of food, production, and culture from just one governor title. When you have just one governor title meet all of your basic needs, really weird builds can arise. If you want to see this in action, check out my video, The Importance of Being Flexible in Civ 6. Now, we'll move on to discussing how religious civs, particularly when playing around early holy sites and monumentality, ought to spend their governor titles. First things first, we need to meet the same three needs we went over earlier. Unlike non-religious civs, who have their culture need met by their Golden Age dedication, we'll be going for monumentality. Thanks to this dedication allowing us to buy civilian units with faith, it essentially counts towards handling our production needs. This just leaves food and culture. Hence, the incentive for monumentality civs to spend their first two governor titles on Moksha. Moksha grants a great deal of culture, and as a bonus, also grants us some extra faith and passive religious pressure so that our cities passively convert to our religion quicker. Thanks to Moksha and monumentality, we can meet our production and culture needs. The last need is food. Since we can't get as many internal trade routes with a holy site opening as we could with a commercial hub or harbor opening, we can't really rely on Magnus to meet our food needs. Instead, we have three options. We could go for Feed the World as our religious belief, Audience Chamber as our first government plaza building, or simply spawn in an area with naturally high food yields. 
In any case, we have three governor titles remaining after spending our first two on Moksha. If we're playing an Ancestral Hall game, we have the option to spend them on Liang and rotate her around for city parks. There's also the option of spending one governor title on Magnus and rotating him around to make use of his extra yields from chopping, while spending the remaining two titles on Pingala for some extra science. If we decide to go for an audience chamber game, it's even viable to just go Moksha 2 into spending our remaining three titles just assigning Pingala, Magnus, and Liang to several of our cities in order to maximize the yields from the audience chamber. So, we've spent virtually this whole video talking about only the first five governor titles of the game. This may leave you wondering, what about the rest of the titles? The thing is, the relative importance of governor title choices decreases as the game goes along. Once we reach the mid-game and start getting our 6th title and beyond, we can just spend them on whatever feels good in the moment. Pingala 2 for more science, Reina 3 for an extra trade route capacity and more gold, etc. The only really important governor title choices in the late game are a handful of powerful victory condition enablers, such as Moksha doubling tourism in a city, and Pingala granting 30% extra progress towards space projects in a city. Since none of you will ever actually win a multiplayer game, there's no need to worry about any of these. That wraps up the content for this video. I'm excited to announce that I've recently launched a Discord server, which you can join to ask me questions and receive updates about things like my streaming schedule, new videos in the works, and more. You can find a link to it in the description. That's all. Herson, signing out.